What's good, YouTube? It's your boy R. Welcome back to AM Island Vibes. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing right. Today, back with another reaction video. Today, we're going to be reacting to UK rapper's longest prison sentence. Oh my gosh. You know what's the scary part? I know at least 90% of these guys on this, probably even more than 90%, are on these guys is younger than the age of 25. That's the sad part, man. And some of these dudes are rappers, and I, I know they're just gifted and talented, but they throw their whole life away, you know what I mean? But let's get into the video, man. Sad to say. The UK drill scene can get pretty wild. Stabbing, kidnapping, Shit. murder, and extortion are all common, and drill rappers are known to make music about real crimes going on in the streets. But when you're living that life and telling the world about it at the same time, it's not hard for the feds to figure it out. Yeah. Here's a look at a few drill rappers who got arrested for murder. Jules. Jules is a rapper from North London who's associated with the NPK Drill Gang. NPK, also known as Sin Squad, is a group based around the Northumberland Park and Parkland area of Tottenham and the N17 Postcode. They're one of the most well-known gangs in the UK drill scene and beef with rival crews like NPK, Wood Green, and TPL. Jules is one of NPK's top hitters and one of the most respected gang members in North London. He's also one of the group's most skilled rappers and had an effortless flow and deep wordplay that set him apart from many other drill artists. But like many talented drill artists, he never got a chance to truly shine because he was arrested for murder before blowing up as a rapper. On December 22nd, 2018, Jules, along with three other teenagers, were arrested for the murder of Wilhelm Mendez, a 25-year-old boxer. The other three with him that night were other MPK members, Stewie, Scatty, and Rose. They were all under 18 at the time, with the youngest being just 15 years old. Mendez was a Portuguese national who was just getting off work at his job as a porter in a restaurant. The crew was hanging around outside the Tottenham High Road bus stop after they had just beat up and robbed two boys aged 18 and 19 who were waiting for the bus. They then made their way to the Bruce Grove station where they spotted Mendez and decided to attack him next. Mendez, who was an amateur boxer, tried to fight him off. Even though it was four versus one, Mendez was older and knew how to fight, so he managed to beat up the younger two, Rails and Stewie. But he didn't realize that Scatty had two blades on him. He passed one of them to Jules and they both chased him into an alley. They grabbed the bag he had and then stabbed him to death outside the McDonald's. CCTV footage from outside the restaurant showed the two older boys fist bump and then casually walk away, leaving Mendez to bleed out on the street. The four boys were later caught and arrested. Stewie and Rouse were only 15 at the time of the crime and were not found guilty of murder or were charged with robbery. One was sent to a youth rehabilitation center and the other was sentenced to two and a half years in prison. Jules pled guilty to manslaughter and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Scatty pled guilty to murder and was sentenced to 17 years behind bars. With Jules being locked up, NBK not only lost one of its most certified members, but it also lost one of its most talented rappers. On the track Op Block Tour, Jules could be heard rapping about a similar stabbing. It's not clear if he's talking about the murder that got him locked up, but he describes it in such vivid detail that you can tell he's not playing around. Because they were under 18 at the time of the murder, it's likely that with good behavior they won't serve the entire length of their sentences. But if old NBK beat forces them to go hard in prison, it may be a while before Scatty and Jules are back on the street. If you thought that was wild, this next rapper stabbed four fans outside of a concert, killing one of them, and was- Oh, this kill my right Yeah, It's me, bro. There's a lot to process, so bro. Y'all ever just get so much information sucking in your face at the same time? You be like, whoa, whoa, slow down. All right, that's, 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 that's backtracking. These dudes were 15. And I hear thinking about 18, 19, you know what I mean? 15, what was I doing at 15? And I was, I know, I, I, I know, I, I know I was touching myself at 15, that's for damn sure. But I wasn't thinking about robbing nobody, bro. That's all I said, thank God. I, I didn't have a lifestyle where I had to be in the streets. Thank God for all the time. The rest at the airport after fleeing to Greece. Scars. Scars is a rapper from the Hornsey area of London, associated with the 8th Gang, also known as Bill Side or B8. They are known to be with other North London gangs like 22 from Woodgreen and 3x3 from These Edmonton. Dudes are Rolls Royce. Scars is one of the most prominent rappers from the 8th, who was well known in North London. On August 25th, 2019, a grime rapper named Mo Stag was performing at the Gallery Nightclub in Maidstone. Scars was good friends with Mo Stag, and he went to the concert that night to support his boys. But being a well-known driller in the streets of London, Scars didn't go to the show on arm. He pulled up with a huge machete in case anything popped off. It's not entirely clear what happened that night, but after the performance, a huge brawl broke out in the street outside the club. The fight was captured on CCTV footage as well as cell phone video. The video shows punches and kicks being thrown, people being tossed to the ground and jumped, and all kinds of mayhem. At one point, you can see Scar stab a person on the ground a few times and then run away with the machete in his hand and a sweatshirt over his face. 
In total, four people were stabbed and one was killed. The murder victim's name was Andre Bent. He happened to be the cousin of Bradley McIntosh from the pop group S Club 7. All of the victims were civilians and the fight does not seem to be gang related other than the fact that Scars was associated with the eight. Right after the murder, Scars fled the country and went to Greece. But he didn't even last a week and returned to London six days later. By then, the police had already figured out that he was the prime suspect and were waiting for him on the tarmac when he landed back in the UK. According to authorities, they used his music as a way to track him and identify him as the attacker in the video. His lawyers tried to argue that he was acting in self-defense. Scars and his crew had been attacked first outside the- Now, bro, listen. If he shouldn't have fled the country, if he did, you know what I mean, bro, you could have get your lawyer to beat that case. I ain't gonna cap. Could have get your lawyer to be like, hey, self defense. But you flee the country. That's where they can they they can try to shit you over. You did. Club. Two other knives were later recovered at the crime scene, and according to his defense team, one of his friends had been stabbed leading up to the attack. Scarves was just 16 at the time, and they argued that he was traumatized and acted in the heat of the moment. But the fact that he brought a giant machete to a concert was a great look. The judge also noted that after getting convicted, Scarves got his hands on the phone where he recorded a rap that was released to the internet. He brags about the killing in normal drill fashion and shows little remorse for his actions. The family of Andre Bent also revealed that his fiance was pregnant and she was going to tell him the next morning, but never got a chance. Nine other people were also arrested for the brawl and charged with violence disorder. Their sentences ranged from one to three years, but Scars was the only one charged with murder. Hey, that's one thing I must say with the UK. Boy, in the UK, you can't even get one little punch out. You know, you know what I mean? You know, now, you know, a long time ago, you'd be like, yo, you say something to me? What? You say something to me? Come on. Mm -hmm. You know, one little punch show, a quick punch show. UK police don't play that. They go lock you off. I can put you in jail and give you years. You would just give you, they give you what, what two, two years, three years for disorderly something? Bro. Despite his claims of self defense, he was found guilty and sentenced to 20 years in prison. God! You can tell what really went down that night. What seems most likely is that Scars and his group were pressed over some gang shit and reacted. Once the brawl broke out, it was probably hard to tell who was who, and he may have stabbed civilians by accident, thinking they were the odds. Or maybe the fight went down, and Scar just wanted to gain some internet clout by chefing up anyone he can get his hands on. He probably thought he could just start off to Greece and start over. But being a teenager with limited funds, who wasn't able to use their true identity in a foreign country, probably wasn't as easy as he thought it would be, which is why he returned to London. Unfortunately, London lost another talented rapper. But that's what happens when you bring a machete with you on a regular night out. But if you thought that was crazy, these next rappers stabbed a dude to death after a minor argument in a KFC. BD and Dopey. BD and Dopey are two artists from South London associated with the RP or Ropple Park Gang, also known as 67. Oh, I learned why a lot of them don't show their face. I think somebody in the comments was telling me because a lot of them is being that. Well, I knew this already. I, I just assume. A lot of them is be speaking on some real street shit, like some real. We ain't talking about your little. Um, cloud shit, no disrespect to America, but y'all got a lot of fake rappers who say they bought their life, but they ain't really bought their life. Some of them those in the UK. I'm gonna look at you, let me, let me look at you there, let me come a little closer. They really bought that shit. Listen, alright, you stay there. But yeah, though, so what they have to do is protect their face, you know, so they won't, won't be brought, being brought back up in court. Sometimes they use it against them in court. And, and the ops might see it. But then again, if your ops see it, your ops know, your ops know who your, your name is and all that. You know what I mean? RP is based in the Rappel Park Estates in the borough of Lambeth and is known to be with rival gangs like 410 and UTH. BD and Dopey are two rappers associated with RP, known for tracks like Local Shops, where they rap about slashing ops and going hard in the streets. BD even starts off the verse by rapping, I don't run my mouth, I just swing my shank, which is exactly what ends up getting him a murder charge. On September 10th, 2019, BD and Dopey were with some other dudes from their neighborhood at a KFC on Edgware Road in central London. Another man named Yusuf Beaker, a business student at the nearby city of Westminster College, was meeting his cousin on his lunch break. BP and Dopey were arguing with the girl inside the KFC, and Yusuf and his cousin stepped in the defender. They argued with the gang for about 30 minutes before the rappers got fed up and stabbed Yusuf to death on the pavement outside. CCTV footage from inside the KFC showed the whole thing go down, plus there were several witnesses. The rappers were quickly arrested and tried at the Old Bailey Court in London. Yusuf was only 17 at the time and had no ties to any gang. So it was just a petty argument that unfortunately led to bloodshed. See so now this is why I gotta say you pussy. You pussy. I don't care. You pussy. Because a nigga disagree with you. What you gotta say? Dang, I wasn't there. But you never know. But then again, you telling me 
Bro, oh my gosh, bro. Oh my gosh, bro. Man, it's so much size to that story. Them niggas pussy because they they, they, they pick on a good a dude. Bro, listen, man. It's crazy, bro. You know why I say it's crazy? Niggas go on here, I see y'all on a little, little, little study break. Like you see me and this cousin on his lunch break. Got some KFC. You know. They probably talking bad to the guy. He probably, yo, yo, man, you know, chill, chill, chill. Dude say, yo, man, what? you know, they start going in on the dude. Not the dude dad. For trying to be a, well, that's what I'm saying. Trying to play Captain, Captain America. I always tell people, boy, I ain't Superman, boy. Ah, uh, hey, listen. I ain't gonna lie. I probably, I, I, that's probably some whole ass shit. But anyway, me and my boys, right? We was coming, he's dropping up, he was picking up from work. So he was going home, like, it was like 12 o'clock in the morning. He's getting up late. So we driving, coming around the roundabout. The light shine on this guy on this corner. Two cars parked like this. And she talking to her boyfriend. And her boyfriend push her. So we see it. And this dude fucking cock back. This dude flipping cock back. Oh, probably not much. Cock back. Boom. Dive in that girl's shit. I mean, a freaking Roman Reigns punch. Boom. I look at that girl. That girl drop. Boom. I do look at me. I look at him. I do say, boy, you don't know what they got in that corner. The best thing you could do is drive down the road. Tell the police, hey, they on the corner fighting. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I didn't call the police. My, I tried to mind my business, but I ain't gonna lie. I feel bad afterwards. I did feel bad. I did feel bad. Dude said, but you what? You, 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 you won't stop it. I said, I ain't say stop, but let's call the police or something. Sorry, you call them. I didn't call them. I didn't want to get involved in that. I know that's some whole ass shit. That was some whole ass shit. I ain't gonna lie. But you live, you learn. And an innocent bystander lost his life just because he stood up for a female. Thank you. It's not clear what sparked the argument or how disrespectful it got, but it was still a pretty vicious attack for something that could have been left as an argument exactly. or a mostly fist fight. Six minutes. Bro, for the rest of them. man, listen. If you got a problem with me, bro, you want to fight me, bro? I'm always down to fight fists. Always, bro. Like, if you got a problem with me? Let me know. We could, we could, we could, we could throw these hands. Cause at the end of the day, you beat my ass. You live, I live. You, I be Charles. We both live. We move on. Such is life, right? Awesome, awesome, awesome. But niggas is getting it. Niggas so pussy these days. Everybody wanna pick up gun, knife, weapon, and start. What? Come on, man. Stop being pussy. The murder. The trial originally started back in March 2020, but was delayed due to coronavirus. It was the first case to come before the court after the break. Three of the boys in the group were acquitted of the murder. One was charged with manslaughter, and the other two were charged with murder and possession of a deadly weapon. Dolby was one of the group members who were allowed to walk, but VD was not so lucky and was sentenced to life. Rumors that someone in the crew snitched were going around because half of them were acquitted, and the other half got hit with pretty harsh sentences. But the whole thing was also captured on camera, so what's more likely is that the prosecutors didn't have enough evidence to convict all six. So they focused on the ones who did the stabbing. Yusuf's death was pretty senseless and could have been avoided, but in the world of drill, no one is truly safe, not even civilians. Yusuf most likely didn't know what he was getting himself into when he started an argument with a group of active gang members. But if that wasn't crazy enough, these next rappers had an innocent music producer to death in broad daylight after confusing him for an op. Nico and KK. Nico and KK are two rappers and gang members from South London. Nico is associated with the show, or Shower Gang, which is just older members of the crew A14. KK is associated with B-Side, also known as 785, a gang based in Bellingham. B-Side and Show A14 are allies and are known to be for groups like Zone 2 and Splash Gang. Nico and KK even appear together in a track called Splash, where they dish Splash Gang and let them know what will happen if they catch them in public. On February 24, 2017, KK and Nico decided to do a ride out in South London, a UK street term for going out hunting for ops. They came across a group of Splash Gang members and decided to make a move. First, two guys on mopeds rolled up and pointed guns at the group. They turned to run away, but the attackers chased them down and caught the slowest one, stabbing them to death. It was later revealed that the victim was not a member of Splash Gang, but just an innocent music producer named Dean Pascal, who just happened to be in the area because he was helping his friends shoot a music video. The two rappers he was helping did have ties to Splash Gang, and Dean was killed in a case of mistaken identity. 
They stabbed Dean 14 times in broad daylight. He attempted to get some help and stumbled down the road in front of a group of parents walking their children to school, but bled out before paramedics could arrive. Nico was arrested for the murder shortly after, but KK fled to Jamaica to try to hide out. Just like Scars, he didn't make it long abroad and eventually returned to the UK where he was immediately arrested. Nino and KK were charged with murder as well as possession of a deadly weapon. They were both found guilty in court. KK was sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 17 years and Nico was sentenced to life with a minimum of 20 years. There was a rumor floating around that while in Jamaica, KK called Nico, who's his cousin, and told him to snitch you the lighter sentence. But this is unconfirmed internet gossip. Two other B-side affiliates who also participated in the attack were found guilty and given a life sentence and a separate trial. A fifth defendant who was arrested for the crime was found innocent and allowed to walk. Dean's murder was just another tragic example of knife crime in the UK getting out of control. He wasn't killed for anything that he said or did, just because he happened to be hanging around with the wrong people at the wrong time. But in the world of drill, anything can happen, especially when affiliated with active gangs, even if it's strictly business. You can get caught in the line of fire. If you like this video, we have many more on our channel. Bro, you can't, I, you can't, I can't, even, you can't even just say drill because that's all, all beef and rap shit, bro. You, you ever hear to say the enemy of my, you know, I said that's a wrong, that's a wrong freaking one. I was about to say the enemy of my enemy is my friend, but you, 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 your friends are my ops, you, you the enemy too, you dig? If you're my, if you're not my friend, you're my enemy, so. You hanging with the enemies, I guess, to you automatically. That's, that's, that's sad, though, man. Little shit that could just be, could be avoided with just a conversation. Man, I hope, I hope, I hope things get better, though. I really do hope things get better. But, hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. If you guys are new to the channel, man, smash the like button, subscribe. Comment down below. Run the road to 100,000 subscribers. Show your boys some love with that being said. I hope you guys have an awesome day, man. Be happy, be blessed. And remember, the world is yours. Peace. I'm out.